Hi everyone, this is Rob, the Baseball Time Traveler. Thanks for joining me today as we're going to travel back to 1924, 54, and 74. And the reason why we're going to hit those three particular dates is they all seem to match up in baseball history. And I'll try and connect the dots for you as we take a look at some cards, we're going to look at some newspapers, and we're going to look at some old magazines. So stick with me as we go through this, and I think you're going to have a lot of fun. The purpose of this video is to really commemorate Hank Aaron's 50th anniversary of hitting his 715th home run. I'm a few days late from the actual anniversary date of April 8th, but I was waiting for one particular card because the focus of tonight is going to be on Hank Aaron, but I also want to include the 500 home run club members who were either playing at the time Hank hit his 715th or had retired from baseball. So it's a pretty select group. I believe it's 13 players, and we're going to go through each of them in ascending order, finishing with, with Hank. And the first player in that club was the card that I was waiting for, and I'm excited about it because it's a, a pre-war card. It's a 1939 play ball of Mel Ott who had 511 home runs, played for the New York Giants from the uh, late 20s through the 30s, and just was a heck of a ball player. The next 500 club member, member of the Boston Braves, Milwaukee Braves, and Atlanta Braves, the only player to do so to play for all three Braves franchises. Here's the 1954 Bowman of Eddie Matthews finished his career with 512 home runs. Next, another player who also hit 512 home runs, well known to everybody as Mr. Cub, Ernie Banks. And the 521 group is headed by Baseball icon, the splendid splinter, Ted Williams, 1955 Topps card. And Ted has joined at 521 with another one of my favorite players growing up as a kid in the 60s, Willie McCovey. And one of the hobby favorites, he hit 536, but before we go there, we have to hit the uh, gentleman who compiled 534 career home runs, who in 1932 actually hit 60 home runs during the season. No, it's not Babe Ruth. It was none other, none other than Jimmy Fox. Now, Jimmy hit 60 home runs, but... To, Two of them were disqualified because of the games were canceled due to rain. So the records book record book reflects 58 home runs, but in reality, he hit 50 out of the ballpark. So uh, one, one great player, one heck of a heck of hitter for sure. Okay, next at 536 home runs, a hobby favorite for sure. Number seven, Mickey Mantle. Now we're going to go to two players who are actually playing uh, early in their careers while uh, Hank was hitting his 715th. And the first is Philadelphia Phillies third baseman Mike Schmidt. This is his 1987 Topps card. And the reason why I pulled this one is that he had 495 home runs on the back of the card. So he was getting ready to pop the 500 barrier and he finished with 548. Next on the list is a gentleman who made himself famous during the World Series, 1977, Reggie Jackson. I remember that series very distinctly. Four pitches, I'm sorry, three pitches, three, pitchers, three swings, 
three home runs. In fact, I think if I recall correctly, he actually hit four consecutive home runs, the one the night before and then the three uh, at Yankee Stadium the following night. Reggie finished with 563 home runs. Next is an underappreciated power hitter in my estimation, Harmon Killebrew, finished with 573 home runs, playing for the Washington Senators and Minnesota Twins. This is 1950, 65 Topps card, where the Twins um, won the American League pennant and played the Dodgers in the World Series. And next is a player who won an MVP in the National League and then was traded from the Reds to the Orioles. We all know who it is. Frank Robinson won the MVP in the American League as well. Only player ever to do so. 586 home runs. And now I want to show you a paper sports page that I kept from April 9th, 1974. This was the day after. This is the Los Angeles Times. I watched this particular game on TV. I was a freshman in college at the time, and I watched it at my fraternity house. Several of us were going back and forth between the dining room and the TV lounge as we were awaiting Hank getting up. He missed uh, first at bat, but in the fourth inning, he finally connected with Al Downing on the mound, hit it over the left center field fence, and the rest was history. It was quite a moment. Couldn't couldn't afford to miss it because back then we didn't have VCRs, we didn't have DVR, we didn't have anything. You had to either see it or you wouldn't. <laughs> so pretty simple. And the newspaper actually uh, depicts Babe Ruth here, 714 home runs, Willie Mays finished at 660. This would have been the year before he retired, or the year after he retired in 1973. And then you have Frank Robinson and Harmon Killebrew depicted there. And they're still in the, their careers winding down. Here's the flip side of that page. And uh, Frank was at 552 at this point, and Harmon was at 546. And there's a happy and relieved Hank Aaron. Very tense time for him. He commented after uh, rounding third and coming home and being greeted by his teammates. And then his parents came down on the field and his mom hugged him. And Hank commented that he had never been hugged so hard by his mother. And his mother later admitted that she was hugging him so hard because she was afraid he was going to be shot because he had received such hate mail and death threats in leading up to this game. Okay, and then I have one more newspaper to show you, since we're talking about home run kings. This is from the 1924 Baltimore News, and this is July 11th, 1924. If you notice carefully there, Babe Ruth knocks out his 24th home run. And this took place against the White Sox, and this would have been um, Babe's 200 and 62nd home run of his career. And I looked back earlier in 1924 because I was trying to get as close to April 8th as I could. Um, would have been 50 years later that uh, Hank broke the record. And I found that on April 20th, Babe hit his first home run of the 1924 season. And it was against none other than Hall of Famer, the big train, Walter Johnson. And that was his 239th home run. And then just one final note on Babe. He actually, um, in his final game, uh, his final at bats, if you will, um, he actually hit, um, hit home run 712, 713, and 714. 714 was the first ball to ever be hit out of Forbes Field. So Babe Ruth ended his career in a flourish. He played the next day, had a couple of at-bats, but then retired. So he didn't finish like Ted Williams did, hitting a home run on his very last at-bat, uh, his last appearance. But he did finish with a flourish, 
going four for four, knocking in six runs, hitting three home runs in that one ball game as a Boston Brave. And that was May 25th, 1935. All right, and then finally, um, right in front of you there, you see the first issue of Sports Illustrated, and that depicts Eddie Matthews, who hit 512 home runs. And this game uh, was a photograph taken on June 9th, 1954. This issue came out in August, August 16th to be precise. And the June, June 9th game uh, pitted the Giants against the Braves at County Stadium. And Warren Spahn uh, was the starting pitcher for the Braves. And Eddie Matthews and a young Hank Aaron played in this game. Hank went two for three. And there was another Hall of Famer on the other team by the name of Willie Mays. So you had three hitters in the 500 home run club playing in the same game. And at this point in Hank's career, uh, as of uh, June 1954, he had five home runs in his um, in his pocket at that point. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's the deal. Um, you see his cards there in the background. Um, I didn't collect too many Hank Aaron cards as a kid because he was on the East Coast, didn't see the Braves much, didn't see him while he was playing in Milwaukee either. Uh, smaller market. I was in the LA and really my television watching was limited to watching the Dodgers and Giants for the most part. But uh, I just want to uh, thank everybody for watching. I had a lot of fun pulling out a lot of this memorabilia and it's uh, memories that I'll always have. And I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the uh, features and the cards that uh, surround a lot of these wonderful, iconic, heroic players. I'll look forward to seeing everybody next time. Take care, everybody.